Krishnamurti, the great teacher, when asked what made him so different from his students, said the only difference between me and you is I don't mind what happens. I don't mind what happens. A very challenging statement to the ego. When I heard, when I read that statement by Krishnamurti, first of all, I didn't believe it. I said, no, he must, that's just not. Mm -mm. Everybody minds something that happens. And then I thought about Jesus. And then I wondered whether he was serious, not Jesus, but Krishnamurti. I wonder, wondered whether he was actually pointing very, very seriously to the possibility that lies within each of us. to actually somehow, despite the obvious argument of the flapping around divided mind, was it possible? Is it possible? Is there any benefit? What, is, what, what do we have to do to be in a state, to be, to reach a depth or, or, or an openness, as we talk about, where you can actually navigate the world from a place of not minding what happens? Why, why, why would anyone want to do that in this hostile world and, and, and for myself I kept and have kept on returning to this place because still even though it's been many years now and I don't mind what happens still the tentacles of minding what happens, depending on what it is that's happening or the degree of it or the intensity of it, still the ghost occasionally sort of blows through or arrives at my door. So then do I, do I, do I imagine that I've failed in the task? Because there's a lot of, you know, we, we on the spiritual journey, we set ourselves these, these, these tasks and we, we still believe in the, in the success or failure. I've passed or I haven't passed kind of approach to our spirituality. So we, we've achieved it with, with, well, I don't mind what happens on six days a week, but on the seventh day, I had a complete meltdown and I minded what happened so terribly that I thought, oh God, it's all lost. It's all lost. All of the work of the six days, all of that hard work that I put in is all lost. I'm a failure. And there we are back again at square one, back in the, the divided self, back in the divided state, back in the very state that we're trying to escape in the first place. So we go round and round and round and round, knocking on the same door of perfection, of desired perfection. Only when I've completed the whole seven days, absolutely start to finish in this radiant absolutism, will I be able to rise onto the pedestal of Krishnamurti.
I'm, I'm a great believer in failure since I've done so much of it. Success, not so good. Maybe we can fail our way to not minding what happens. Instead of succeeding our way, oh. maybe you know we could be the the warriors of of failure. What a noble term! What a noble way that 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 might be. But this. Ultimately, it's it, this unique individuation that each of you are and that I am has to find our way through these seemingly treacherous waters of transcending, deepening from, dealing with uh, the, the, this perennial, tenacious, egoic tyranny that the, that the Western mind particularly suffers from. And each of us is called to meet it in our own way. An ongoing meeting with what is, finding out for ourselves where our edge is, where I do mind what happens. Why do I mind what happens? Who is it that's minding what happens? Is there any validity in, in, in minding what happens? What does it do to me? when I mind what happens. I'm reminded of times that I've, 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 I've sort of been neurotic about something I thought was going to happen, and I minded what was going to happen before it actually happened. The imagined future is the same thing as the, as the, as the past, as the traumatized past. It's the imagined future. I was there minding what I thought was going to happen. And that happened two years ago when we moved in here. I, I heard this noise and I imagined that the people moving next door were bringing trailers and trucks and they were going to be from some godforsaken state that I had it in my imagination that they were going to be like wild people who were, who were moving along just based on a sound that I had and the fear in my own imagination because that, that's, that's what, I, what, what I conjured up. I did mind what was going to happen, and it didn't happen. They were the nicest people ever who moved in next door. They were like from Portland or something, like really cool, cool people with a great cool dad and stuff. And I was like left there with, with, with this, you know, with this really minding what was going to happen that actually never happened. And then, so it was just tortured by my own imagination tortured by a, 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 an erroneous fear that I'd carried from somewhere in a, in, 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 a, in a bit of a wounded past. I did mind what was going to happen. So it taught me, it kind of taught me valuably within myself. Easy, Kavi, easy, easy with the, with the giving my allegiance to the mind that conjures up an endless litany. And I'm no different from you. And I know you all have this in your own unique way. Everybody has a story. Everybody minds what happens because it comes with the package, comes with the parcel, comes with the conditioning, comes with the agitated self, comes with the agitated self that we're all trained to be one way or another, because our dis dysfunctional parenting and, and God, the dysfunctional education and dysfunctional societies in their hideous, imperfect perfection that they throw at us and all of our personal wounding. We mind what happens, all right. So what do we do about that? What do we do about that? 
And where do we do it from within ourselves? Do we do it simply from the cognitive self that wants to argue with that statement, that phrase, I don't mind what happens, or in order to find God, you must welcome everything, because they're the same thing. They're utterly the same thing. Do we try and argue with our reality or experience or the world with all of its insanity? Try and navigate a way through with the mind, or do we have to abandon the mind at a certain point? What, do we do? what does that mean? Abandoning the mind at a certain place or certain point. These are phenomenal questions for us that we spend our days exploring and all of our meetings are about the same thing. What does it mean to, to, to live from the deepest, from the deepest? Where and how can we abandon the mind that wants to sort everything out all of the time, all of the time? No mean feet. No mean feet. <laughs>